Hey everyone, Token Dave over here, the dorky token black guy that's just trying to get by. I welcome to the first edition of The Lowdown. The Lowdown is basically where I give a quick review of a recent movie that has come out. So I'm going to give you guys the lowdown on Spider-Man Homecoming. When Tony Stark asks Peter Parker to take part in the Civil War as his alter ego Spider-Man, the 15-year-old believes that he has hit it the big time as a reserve member of the Avengers. Two months after the events of Civil War, life has not gotten any better or exciting for the high school student. He is still on the outs of the social circle at school. He is still stopping petty crimes and is frequently having a check in with Stark's assistant. Bored with his mundane life, Peter wants more excitement, especially as Spider-Man. He gets his wish where a nearby ATM is robbed using advanced weaponry that inadvertently destroy a local bodega in his queen's residence. Putting one and one together, Parker realizes that these weapons are in relation to the Chintari invasion incident that happened in New York City and sees this as an opportunity to prove to Iron Man that he can be a full-fledged Avenger. Everyone that has been a fan of Spider-Man has wanted him, has been desperate for him to finally join the MCU, and he does with flair. Now, fans of Spider-Man themselves, especially if you're a fan of the comics, you will be a little disappointed with a lot of the adaptations because unlike some other uh, iterations, mainly the Sam Raimi and the Amazing Spider-Man movies, None of these, both of those had at least something to do with one of the canons. Being Sam Raimi had to do with the original Marvel canon and The Amazing Spider-Man was more of an adaptation of the Ultimate Universe. Here, you're in no man's land with the adaptations. However, there are tons of Easter eggs in this movie if you are a fan of the comics. You know, you get the Easter egg of Peter's first crush, you get the Easter egg of one of his villains, you get an Easter egg of actually an event that's yet to come, and in addition, you get an Easter egg of basically what other high school antics that he will that he will face. In addition, you also have this movie is very meta. It's very self-reflective upon not only the Spider-Man character himself, but as superheroes in general in both the movies and the comics. In addition, you also have, in my opinion, the second best MCU villain within the movies thus far, which is Michael Keaton's portrayal of the Vulture. Not only is Michael Keaton's portrayal of the Vulture outstanding, but this is actually, you know, a better upgrade of the villain himself in both renditions, both the main Marvel Universe, which is what this character is supposed to be, but also an even better rendition of the Vulture, whom is under a different name in the Ultimate Universe. A disappointment is that some of Spider-Man's traditional supporting characters, mainly Aunt May, is greatly underutilized and there are some mythos that you know you are not introduced to in this like mainly the daily bugle and all however this is actually replaced with basically parker actually saying that he's interning with basically uh tony stark and his company you know in addition you also get that some of his personal dilemmas are not as earth-shaking as they normally are because we have to keep in mind that Peter is in high school, which is another joy that we finally have a Spider-Man movie with the character himself as a high school student, something that all Spider-Man comic book fans have been warning from the jump. In addition, basically, the action sequences are outstanding and very entertaining. While most of the... I've been noticing that with, especially with superhero movies, the last action sequence tends to drag a little bit. This one is actually very exciting. And, you know, you actually feel like you're growing with the character himself. Overall, you know, we have, a gr we have quite possibly the best Spider-Man. In my opinion, Tom Holland is 
the best Spider-Man and Peter Parker of the of his two predecessors. And in addition, you have great character interaction. You have basically a different view of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the view of teenagers, and how the bigger world effect the bigger outside world directly affects their lives, and as well as you get an understanding of governmental intervention putting their boot on the smaller person. As well, you get great action sequences, funny dialogues, and a great and bottom line, a good time in the movies. So all I can say is Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh yeah, Spider-Man Homecoming is slamming. While I want to say that it kicks ass, I can't give it the kicks ass rating. However, I will say that this is actually, of all the Spider movies that have been out, this is the second best Spider Man movie, in my opinion, that's out. And is basically one of the mid tier movies of the MCU. Agree? Disagree? Drop me a comment below. Hit that like button. Subscribe. Ring that bell so you'll know when a new video loads. And spread this video out. But until then, this has been Token Dave, the dorky token black guy that's just trying to get by, and I'll catch you guys later.